Hey guys, today I'm going to start a new series of videos about how you can easily look for potential habitable exoplanets from your home without the need of any telescope. In this first episode, I'm going to show you how to use an online project, which is free and gives you the opportunity to find exoplanets by analyzing data from the Kepler Space Telescope. How? Well, the method you are going to use is called transit photometry. You are going to look for a drop in a star's brightness produced by an exoplanet crossing the star from our line of sight. The link to the project, called Planet Hunters, is in the description. So now, let's begin. First of all, I recommend you to create an account in order to receive credit for your discoveries. Now, in the light curves, the x-axis shows you the days spent observing the star. The y-axis shows you the brightness of the star, and each dot represents one measurement of that brightness. Depending on how far the exoplanet is from the star or if several exoplanets are transiting, you may see one or many drops in the light curve with the same or different deepness and distance among them. For example, these drops are caused by single exoplanets, because they have the same deepness and they are regularly spaced. Moreover, this light curve tells you that the exoplanet is close to the star because the orbital period only has 2, 4, 6, 8 days. And it also gives you an estimate of the size because the deeper the transit, the larger the exoplanet. So you are looking for dots that appear lower than the rest for a short period of time, usually hours. And when you spot a potential transit, mark it on the light curve and click on finished. Like groups of 30 days with transiting exoplanets that are potential habitable usually have most of the dots at the same height, which means that the star only suffers from significant decreases in its brightness when exoplanets or another star transit. However, you can also find exoplanets orbiting, for example, variable stars, but these planets are unlikely to host intelligent life. Actually, variable stars are one of the most common false positives, let's say, light curves that seem to have a transit, but they don't. Variable stars tend to suffer from changes in its brightness over a long period of time, usually days, and they can be periodic or not. So if this transit is not here, and this one is not here, both curves would be false positives. Another typical false positive are eclipsing binaries which are stars transited by another one. They produce curves with two drops, one of them being less deep than the other when the smaller star passes behind the large one. Alright, and this is pretty much all you need to know. So far, several people have found exoplanets through this project. One of them is, for example, Kepler-64b, a Neptune-sized exoplanet found in 2012. Another example is Kepler-86b, a Jupiter-sized exoplanet discovered in 2013. This one is interesting because it is located in the habitable zone and if it has moon, this one would probably have a rocky core and a greenhouse atmosphere that could allow to have liquid water on the surface. Finally, I would like to say that NASA needs you. They have millions of data that needs to be analyzed by humans and they don't have the resources to do so. For this reason, I encourage you to participate in the project. You don't have to spend too much, too much time. Five minutes per day would be enough. What is your reward if you succeed? Well, not only that you can say you have found a potential habitable exoplanet, but also that you will enter in a small group of people that have discovered one and your name will appear in the research paper, in news, etc. Moreover, the faster we find more potential habitable exoplanets, the sooner we will start sending satellites and robots to them. Remember, for example, the announcement of the Breakthrough Starshot project last year by the billionaire Juni Milner after the discovery of the exoplanet Proxima B. By the way, if you haven't watched my video on Proxima B, I encourage you to watch it now. Alright, and that's all for today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, subscribe, click on the bell and share this video if you want. Uh, feel free to leave any comments, suggestions or questions below. And again, thank you very much and see you on the next video on how to find potential habitable exoplanets from home. Bye-bye.